Hello StarCraft 2 nerds, this is EJK, and this video is going to be between TY versus Sulky on Dusk Towers. Very, very cool macro game that I decided to pick out, because we're going to focus not so much on the game itself, but the game plan, and looking at redundancy and purpose in a game plan. So, the general game theory and... and that, um, um, game theory, what's it called? Analysis, not analysis, game theory, reasoning, and logic that goes behind creating a strong foundation for a game plan. And notice how I'm saying game plan, because a game plan can is a very, very, at its core, simple thing. And TY's game plan this game is simply to occupy the middle spot right here. The most important spot on the map for TY is the center area where my mouse is making a small little circle. And we see TY later put up a contain with a lot of units uh, that makes it pretty unbreakable for Soul Key to get past. But before that happens, TY must take important steps in his game plan to ensure that he has the opportunity to set up that sort of defense. So, a situation where Sulky might be able to prevent TY from doing that is if Sulky can get creep spread there, uh, it becomes extremely hard for TY or any play Terran player for that matter to push a Zerg player to push a Zerg player's creep away and to engage a Zerg army on that said creep spread. So if creep spread can get to that spot on the map for Soul Key, then he can really he really has the ability to contest that spot. But if there's no creep spread, then it becomes a lot harder for Soul Key to engage because he won't be on creep. And TY has uh, he can take a better fight off of creep. And so his army will have an advantage in trying to secure that spot location. <clears throat> uh, occupying this spot has multiple advantages. Mostly, it's a good spot to set up drops. You can, since it's at the center of the map, it provides an equidistant area to dropping some of your army towards the main base, or dropping some of your army towards one of these outer bases here. I wish I had my mouse cursor was bigger, or I could like outline, or point, or like highlight on the minimap, or even make the minimap bigger and blow it up, and then draw the lines. That'd be awesome. But that technology is not—I do not understand that technology, and if it's even available. Tragic. So sets up a good spot to set up drops, and we see this Viking. It has a very interesting pathing. Rather than going towards these two overlords, and this these two overlords is what every single Zerg player will do. They'll have an overlord somewhere around here, around your natural, and somewhere around your main. That's Those are the number one and number two spots that a Zerg player will place their first two overlords when they are coming across the map. And what TY does, he knows that the overlords are here, but what he does instead is he sends his Vikings straight to the main base area with, so that he can clear out overlords there before any fast mulisks come out so that he has a bigger timing window for his future drops. And we see Sulky spreading out overlords right now. And as soon as his Viking starts hitting these overlords, Sulky has to go back, go back, go back. <laughs> these overlords are so slow. But TY is already setting up with this Viking and the Overlord Denial in this part of the map tells us that he's going to be dropping heavily into the main base. And he does have a nice little retreat point at the gold base. It has the rocks covered there. So he can simply land his units and keep them there until the Zerg player is out of position and then drop those units straight into the main base. Very, very nice usage of the map. So that's kind of point number one that the spot, occupying the spot can help do. Another 
benefit is it makes the bases safer. So by occupying the spot, you essentially split the map in half. So that's the only way from one side of the map to the other. So when you control that map, you control what units go across the map. So what that means is it controls the units that you have that can attack your opponent's bases, and it controls your opponent's units and really limits what economic damage they can do to your future bases if they can't get across. And lastly, it also creates a very forward offensive push location. So TY doesn't have to push with it, but just the imminent pressure is all that he needs to accomplish benefits and dividends from that spot. So right now, important thing going on, gotta pause it because oh, I really hate Twitch. So what's going on right now is TY's first two medevacs and the four Hellions are going straight to the fourth base. Now remember I said a little bit earlier how if Sulky got creep spread at this spot area then it would be a lot more difficult for TY to hold, right? Well, if we take a look at Sulky's creep spread, he has an insane amount of creep tumors out on the map, but none of them are really close to the spot yet. They're about a good minute or so from actually being in a closer proximity. So what TY does, instead of uh, scanning and trying to clear creep immediately, he knows that he doesn't have to deal with the creep until it starts to get closer to the spot. So what he does instead is, since he controls the spot, he uses that as a forward advantage or forward pushing point. He circles around to the fourth base, gets that snipe off, which is very important, gets a couple creep tumors as well, which means Sulky will want to replenish the creep tumors to connect his fourth base before connect or before plant or before replanting them at the center ish location of the map. Getting three more creep tumors there is great by TY because it slows the impeding progress of the creep. And that's already a worthwhile trade for TY. And now we see his army camping at the spot, just occupying it because you control that spot area and you have vision over both of those small entrances, you know exactly if the Zerg player is going to be counterattacking you or not. So by having units there at all times, or almost all times, and having vision there, it prevents ca any sort of counterattacks from going by unnoticed by you. Which is very, very... Which is like a big relief for Terran players when you don't have to worry about Bane Ling Ling busts at your third base while your army's out across the map and you get caught with your pants down and you lose like 20 SCVs. Oh, it's not a good feeling. So the creep spread is now starting to get closer towards the spot and this is TY's really first dedicated effort to pushing the creep spread back. Now this engagement doesn't go too well for TY. However, he did push the creep back a little bit. So, the, judging if this is an effective trade or not shouldn't be based upon just resources lost or not. Effect, TY effectively took a more cost if inefficient trade than Sulky, for sure. A very strong argument can, made, can be made for that in Minerals to Gas. But, TY slowed the progress of the creep spread ever so slightly, and so that kind of makes it a little bit worth it, because as soon as you get, as soon as TY can get this spot area, all of a sudden he can, <laughs> he will start trading very, very cost efficiently, and the benefits from taking that spot will out, or from keeping Sulky from having that spot outweigh the slight cost inefficient trades TY takes in order to keep that spot secure. So, um, oh, I know, my allergies. Uh, one thing I want to point out here while the game is paused, the Viking did clear the overlords here, but Sulky has very smartly placed them out again as soon as the Mutalists were out, and he got overlord speed. You can just re those overlords out. TY is still at a spot where 
Sulky doesn't have Overlord detection, and currently right now, Sulky's entire army is at one hotkey. So Sulky does not expect a drop into the main base to occur. Both of the Mutalisks and the Banelings, they're all on like one hotkey. If we take a look at the minimap, they kind of just move around like a little glob. Not really sure what Sulky's doing with them. And we can see reinforcements stream across the map, and I believe they're in an egg rally or larva rally, so they go straight into the army. And this is a disadvantage for Sulky, for sure. Not only does he lose a couple active creep tumors there that pushes the creep away from the spot, this main drop also gets in as well, because Sulky wasn't able to... He didn't have vision for it, and his army was clumped into one. The Mutalisk should have been split apart to deal with such potential drops or some units left in the main base to not get caught out of position. So this that small drop did a good amount of damage, I would say. Uh, if we take a look at the game currently, we see that Sulky is on his way to Ultralisks. He has plus one flyer armor researching, which is a great investment into the late game. He has a booming economy. He's on four bases. TY is just now taking his fourth base, and Sulky's going to be take, looking to take his fifth base. And um, more importantly, the adjustments that we'll see in a little bit that Sulky makes is that he sends an overlord over to this area, the gold base area, and he now keeps his army split into two groups. So now he is very present and very aware of the potential of drops into the main base. So we see that Overlord going right there to provide a little bit more vision. Um, we see TY's army just consistently consistently occupying that spot area because he, he knows that he just cannot give that up. He just cannot give that up because it's an essential part to executing his game plan. So what happens here is Although the mutas were in a separate group, the mutas are now being pull, pulled back. This is kind of like a retard magnet, as Destiny so likes to call it, where TY shows a drop with eight marines. They get a cancel on a fifth base, which is nice. But more importantly, they draw the mutalisks out of position. And what Sulky should have done, and I think he's doing that now with his army... Nope. What he should have done was now there's no longer anything to defend Sulky's main base, and now this drop gets in, and TY is able to do a good amount of damage with this single drop. Oh my gosh, those Widow Mines should never happen. Now TY just safely goes back, and we see that this Overlord that Sulky put there, it, he can't put an Overlord there all the time, because it will simply just get sniped. So that's not a very effective way of trying to spot drops and deal with it. We see Sulky's Mutalisks are back in the main base. They're prepared to intercept this drop. TY picks off another Overlord, denying some more anti-drop map vision that the Overlords provide. And we also see him pushing forward to clear some creep off a little bit more. He's not concerned with uh, the creep spread going up to the 4th, the 5th base. He's just concerned about the creep spread not passing his important spot. And we see his army still occupying this area. And still just kind of pushing around to clear the creep as well as he can. Nice widow mine drop by TY. And we see again the Mutalists coming to clean up the drop. But this time Sulky knows that this is supposed to pull him out of position. So what he ends up doing is he is going to... Well, like the Mutalists are still in position, but whenever the Mutalists leave now, so for example they leave to clean up this drop, we see on the minimap Sulky immediately portion splits off a portion of his army to deal with potential drops, and TY already has one set up, and Sulky is now setting up defense to deal with that drop as well. So we see the so TY knows the Mutalists are at the bottom half of hemisphere of the map, and so that's why he drops here, but there's already units in play so the drop gets cleaned up fairly easily. Importantly though, to note, is that although the drop was deflected, it's okay because 
TY's game plan is all about occupying this spot. And if we take a look at what the drop does, although it does no indirect damage, it prevents Solki's army from aggressively, from being used aggressively. Uh, TY splitting his units up on opposite ends of the map at these gold bases with the breakable rocks for safety points pins back a lot of Sulky's army. So we see a lot. We see Sulky. He's very, very intent on both protecting his fifth base and protect. Excuse me. Protecting his main base as well. And what that does is it frees up Ty to occupy the spot that he has. And as more Liberators and Widow Mines and now Ghosts start to get added into the count, uh, we see TY is going to start to put up some more formal defense. Uh, we see the turrets being start or starting to be built here. And now Sulky's just going across the map, but TY has been in this area the entire time, so he's very easily able to plant the Liberators down and plant the Widow Mines down, and he has effectively locked down the spot and effectively won the game at this point. This is the breaking, this is like the winning point where things start to go wrong, is when TY solidifies his positioning of keeping the spot. We see him sacrificing some bio units to uh, clean up, or to, um, gosh, I'm losing my words, to make ghosts. And we see TY is going to be transitioning into a Ghost Liberator bio army. Sulky so trying to break this spot, and we see, even with an Ultra Bane Muta army, as scary as that army is, there is just no way that Sulky can attack into this location in a cost efficient manner. And he does not want to kill off his whole army inefficiently like that. Because they are both now on uh, one, two, three, four, five. They're both now on five bases. So Ty has effectively evened up the lead, and we see now that this uh, game plan is coming into fruition. If we take a look at the mini map, and we saw Sulky earlier trying to bump back and forth. There's no way that his main army can go across without crossing the spot to be able to harass these upper three to four bases of Ty. So what we see Sulky do is a great great thing. We see a Nidus network going down and I just want to pause the game briefly to explain uh, the game or the theory and the logic and reasoning behind this. So TY essentially has a very fortified position in the center of the map currently and that position cannot be broken very easily. So rather than brute forcing his way in through that main chokeway, Sulky chooses to do something that Day9 calls sidestepping, which means you are essentially sidestepping, taking a step to the side from your opponent's strength and attack him or do something that takes advantage of a weakness instead of trying to take or trying to deal with the strength head on. In this case, TY has a very fortified position. The benefits, there are a lot of benefits. Um, good spot for drops, makes the bases safer to take, and creates an offensive pushing location. The disadvantage is that TY is always going to have a big part of his army there to keep that spot on lockdown. And so that means that a Nidus network into his main base, possibly into the fifth base location, those will all force TY to move his army away from the spot, thereby weakening it, weakening it indirectly to reinforce his strengths again. So now we see the Nidus network coming down, and I think this is really the tipping point of the game where everything goes wrong. So there's a drop going into Sulky's main base right now. Uh, it came from the center location and just kind of went like this, and then boom going into the main base. And Sulky chooses to deal with it with his mutilist corruptor flock. Now, it's not the it's not the worst decision in the world to send the mutas and corruptors to deal with the drop. But we see here it's going to cost him dearly because instead the instead of sending a couple ultras and banelings to deal with the drop, 
and having the mutalists and corruptors free to help reinforce the Nidus network, which is coming on across the other side of the map, uh, we see just ultras popping out. And the liberators, once they see it, they quickly move out of their position. There's still going to be some liberators at the spot, I think. And he can just liberation range. Now, if Sulky had his corruptors and mutalists, TY wouldn't have been able to do this very easily, and he would have really had a hard time choosing between keeping the Liberators in liberation mode to deal with the Ultralists on the ground, or to keep them in non-liberation mode so that he could deal with the Corruptors and the Mutalists, giving the Ultralists a much bigger chance of getting damage done. Instead, we see the Mutalist Corruptor flock on the other side of the map dealing with the drops, and I think this is the tipping point of the game. Just it's this is where Sulky can no longer win when he does that like that was his only chance he had the element of surprise he it, this is also before TY started to TY's army started to get even more out of control than it even really was now this position is going to be even more fortified the units are all back to defend it and as soon as TY took this spot, as long as he doesn't lose this spot, he's going to feel like he's won the game, because his game plan revolves around taking this spot and utilizing the many advantages that it brings. And, oh my gosh, so many Liberators. If Sulky had a couple Vipers in this army, the Liberators wouldn't have been able to clump up for sure like this. They wouldn't have been able to splash down all of the air units and they would have been able they would have been forced to split into groups which makes their splash damage attacks a lot weaker you can't do stuff like this and also allows the corruptors to engage like more corruptors versus a fewer liber a fewer liberator count we see sulky smartly adapting to his opponent's army though and he ends up adding in infestors into the mix rather than vipers so that tells us that he doesn't have too much experience playing in this kind of a scenario and his knowledge of the game starts to fall short here as he makes incorrect unit compositional choices to try to deal with the Terran army TY is up a base now, <clears throat> and the economic advantage is only going to get stronger for TY. We see Sulky having a hard time replenishing his supply, and after losing that Broodlord Corruptor fight, TY feels safe enough to slowly push forward, and this is just where the slow death march starts to come from the Terran army, in which the Zerg cannot engage into it, but at the same time needs to deal with the army slowly moving its way across the map so that the Zerg doesn't lose more bases. We see the Infestors coming out now. So, Sulky was really thinking in-game, like, hmm, what can I make to deal with this army? Oh, I guess I'll make Infestors. It's not... If you were to make Vipers as a Zerg player, it would either be, like you have a lot of experience using Vipers and you know that they would be good against this many Liberators, or it came from an out-of-the-game decision where you played a game of this on ladder or a practice game of some sort, you lost against this kind of army composition, and you looked at the replay and you noticed that adding maybe three to four Vipers into the army and using Parasitic Bomb, or using the Vipers and the Abduct to slowly pick off small amounts of liberators from uh, the liberation siege mode would have been more effective. So like one way Sulky can deal with liberators and turrets is to utilize the Viper Abduct because the Abduct outranges both the liberators and the turret range by I believe. Like the turrets only have 7 range and I think Abduct is a crazy like 9 or 10. So TY doesn't have the Liberator upgrade either, so his Liberators are going to be very close to the Liberation Zone. So if uh, Sulky had the Mutalisk Corruptor Flock, made a couple Vipers, and started yanking away at Sulky's uh, Liberator army, 
he could have potentially thinned down the Liberator count enough to the point before T.Y. accrues at a critical mass so that he T.Y. wouldn't have enough defensive capability to hold the spot, and Sulky would effectively uh, destroy T.Y.'s game plan and put T.Y. on the back burner instead of what we see right now. Uh, T.Y. making these battle cruisers tells us that he doesn't know what he's doing either, because if if his game plan involved making the battle cruisers, he would have researched the battle cruiser energy upgrade that does exist, but he is instead researching the Liberator range upgrade, which is an okay upgrade, but also the Banshee speed upgrade without actually researching Cloak. So that's kind of a random assortment of upgrades from TY, and he's also adding in a couple of Ravens too, so he's just adding a little bit of everything to solidify his advantage against the Zerg player. Um, hmm. Just trying to... I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover as we wait for the game. It's inevitable end. But TY, very, very cool game plan, I think. A great way to approach the map. And in a very, very mechanical sort of way, this important spot played different roles throughout the game and changed based on what Sulky was doing as well. I think Sulky's army needs to be more... Hmm... Let, let me think here. Definitely needs Vipers and Corruptors in his army. But to deal with the ground, I guess either Ultra Ling, like he has now. Maybe get rid of the Queens so that he can have a few more Spellcasters. Oh my gosh, eating so much splash damage there. The poor Corruptors. Huh. These Battle Cruisers, just, it's just showing off by T.Y. He's so far ahead. Ouch. That did not go well for Sulky. That's what happens when you try to fight into an entrenched Terran army. So like, that's why T.Y. knew he kind of won the game at, that, at the point that he secured his spot. Because now he's just doing a slow push off of it and there's nothing Sulky can do to stop it. Nice battle cruiser teleport. Just cute play. Um, at this point, being up about 70 supply means you can kind of do whatever you want and win at this point. <laughs> the so like a game plan like this is something that it's very map dependent. But at the same time, you guys can also look for these kinds of things on other maps, either through professional games and watching them, or by coming up with a game plan yourself. The game plan doesn't have to be very complicated. It can be something as simple as we saw here, TY. All he wanted to do was control that part of the map. That's his game plan. Nothing more, nothing less. That's all. That's all the complexity of a game, of a good game game plan you need. And as long as he controlled that spot, he obtained numerous advantages, and was able to do stuff with his gameplay that he otherwise wouldn't have been able to do if he did not have the spot. <clears throat> if you guys have any additional videos you want me to watch. Uh, analyze, blah 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 blah, the usual stuff that I say, just let me know. Otherwise, have happy holidays, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheerios.